Good morning, folks. We're saying goodbye to an active region on the sun, but soon we'll say hello to solar wind enhancements. We've got harsh words today, but don't worry, we'll be a bit nice too. Starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com, we find the last 24 hours were very quiet. The sunspots are carried to the far side on the south. Coronal holes dominate the Earth-facing disk. The solar wind is currently quiet, but that's not expected to be the case when we speak tomorrow. A coronal hole stream and a small CME, possibly merged, will be arriving over the next day and are expected to produce low-level geomagnetic unrest to a maximum of KP5 or 6, the smaller level geomagnetic storms. But we should have eyes on the northern incoming plasma filament too. These things haven't been able to wait to jump out of the corona the last few weeks. It'll be facing Earth as we approach the weekend. Folks, we need to begin the rounds in the Atlantic where thousands of you are asking about earthquake swarms in the area and possible volcanic landslide-driven tsunamis coming for the United States coastline. Look, one day it's going to happen, but these are the important quakes at Canary the last 21 years, and then here is the same for Capa Verde. By the way, in the 1990s, a 6.4 struck here. No landslide, no tsunami. As we look at this area for the last day, I can say we have really nothing that scares me. Someday, it'll go. But until then, welcome to an annual scare on the internet. Global Climate Report is out for August, and this is what they're showing everyone. The white color, the unscientifically titled near average. Well, take a look at what happens when you actually go and check if the area was above or below normal. Sort of unfair to just show the public the first one. And speaking of unfair, can't really say I'm going to miss the source mission. Now, Greg Kopp is incredible and did more than what people expected, but at the end of the day, TSI is just no way to judge solar influence on the terrestrial atmosphere, especially not during a period of extreme geomagnetic secular variation. More on that in a moment, but our happy moment of the day is up next. Welcome back, Dr. Pierre-Marie Robitaille. He has been featured in a new documentary, and it appears that more people are listening to these alternative versions of astrophysics and cosmology than they would have us believe. If you're not subscribed, I highly recommend it. And I don't do much recommending here, so take note when I do. Up next, be thankful you weren't on Mars when Arabia Terra got scary. Largest volcanic eruptions known in the solar system, and yet, somehow, just now becoming mainstream knowledge. The Chinese guest star a thousand years ago has been confirmed to be a nova, another notch on the belt, especially because they see the cloud expanding from a star that's still there. They try to go with the merger explanation, which just helps them sleep at night when they realize how many stars are still there after having a supernova level blast. Folks, I reported the Xenon 1T result failures to find dark matter, and I didn't give them too much crap for sticking with bad science when they should have known better. But today is going to be a different story. Tossing out the idea that the dark energy particle caused their anomalous results, like trying to analyze a frame of a movie and an actress's random strand of hair. Dark energy particle, eh? It's a force, and frankly, the studies recently saying dark energy is nothing more than magnetic repulsion in the universe are 100% absolutely correct. As far as humanly possible from absolutely correct is how we describe temperature records, reconstructions, analyses, and forecasts. More here on the swipe against the hottest climate models, the ones they use to scare us and push the new green deal with the devil. By the way, psychotic amounts of snowfall just fell in Greenland at the finale of what was supposed to be their melting season, which may have erased the entire melting season altogether. As Greenland prepares for its colder months, it's just taken a ridiculous increase in snow mass on the island. Now last but not least, the most important thing on the mid to long range radar, the Younger Dryas, Heinrich Event 1, Heinrich Event 2, and the one we've previously identified as being after 2 but before Heinrich Event 3, they're showing up in the African records, and boy, oh boy, after seeing these spotted one by one, one at a time for years, these last two years have brought dozens of these studies identifying numerous events. They're getting better at this, and just in time. We're due for the next one, and since they are driven by major solar cycles, with Earth's weakening magnetic field ongoing in the modern excursion, the world is about to play medieval times for a few millennia. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.